Building an intelligent supply chain control tower. It's a topic of my conversation today with Heidi Benko. She is Vice President of Product Management with Infor. Hello, Heidi. Hi, how are you? Good to talk to you again. Yeah, great to see you again in person. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> so let's talk about this concept of a supply chain control tower. The term yep. is not new. It's been right. around for a number of years, yep. and maybe it's changed meaning over that time. Yep. What does it mean to you? What is your definition of a control tower? Yep. So I would say there's different types of control towers. And I think in the market right now, the, the term is very maybe overused. Mm. Um, and I think there's a lot of confusion. So, um, and I would say, what, what is a control tower at the basis, right? So the basis of a control tower, the point is to really get visibility in the supply chain and to be able to sense and respond, right? Mm -hmm. So it's about connecting to all the, the parties and the systems first to provide visibility as that foundation and get those insights, right? What's going on, issues, alerts to issues and opportunities, and then to be able to respond and take action. And there's different types that we see, and each one has different levels of opportunity for action, different levels of insights and action as well. So Well, already I'm hearing alarm bells go off when you say different types, because yep. isn't that a contradiction in terms? Isn't the yes. very nature of a supply chain control tower yep. supposed to be something centralized yes. and single that controls everything? Yes, exactly. So I do think there's, and one of our definitions is truly an end-to-end -end supply chain control tower. But just to get there, I think it's helpful to understand other control towers, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, what we've seen is, you know, a lot of control towers started off of execution, right? And typically mainly focused on transportation and logistics, right? Getting visibility to what's going on in transit, right? Connecting to all those parties, getting insights, alerts, and responding within that transit window, right? And uh -huh. we hear more about end-to-end -end visibility there as well, but it's just about transportation, which could be multi-leg, multi-mode but truly not end-to-end -end supply chain. And then there's planning control towers that are mm -hmm. really part of a end-to-end -end planning system. And the goal is to get better end-to-end -end visibility to you know, create better plans and forecasts and replan within the mid and long-term window. And then from a supply chain control tower, we really think that's more, it is about end-to-end, -end, right? It is about bringing together data from planning, what's truly being executed and sense and respond. And there's kind of two types that we even see out there. I know. Oh my God. And we have customers asking us. Uh -huh. So, you know, part of it, I think we see a lot of these companies that try to, you know, it's more like an analytics control tower, right? So they're connecting with an ERP. The goal is to break down the silos. So bringing that planning and execution data, usually into a data lake, right? And applying machine learning and intelligence to provide more predictive insights. And I'd like to talk about oh, that in a second. That's a lot to bite off. Let's go. Yeah, <laughs> right. First of all, I know, let me just say, I noticed the air quotes that you put on end-to-end -end -end supply chain. Sorry. <laughs> no, don't apologize. <laughs> it, was, it was kind of a tell. <laughs> but the idea that maybe, you know, end-to-end -end supply chain is yeah. something we aspire to, yeah. don't necessarily get to. But yeah. what you're talking about here it seems to me to be a bunch of potential silos within an organization, yes. which is, can be deadly. Exactly. So how do you, how do you tear down those walls yeah. with all these different different control towers to yeah. create something that's truly collaborative and truly single yes. in, it, in its uh, Yes, great question. Yeah, so really to be end-to-end, -end, you know, and it really has to be thinking about, I have to deliver product to the customer and who are all the parties involved in that. So I want visibility to the supply chain. It needs to be of where there's product, where there's their inventory, where's their orders and shipments. It has to be all those end-to-end -end flows in a mm -hmm. single place. That has to be all your supply and demand signals in a single place. And then for all the users responsible, whether it's your planners, whether it's customer service, logistics, warehouse, all looking at the same data at the same time. And the other thing I would say for end to end is really, if you think about 80% of all data and processes sit outside you know, a single enterprise with their network partners and partner systems, really has to be part of a multi-enterprise business network. To get yeah. real-time visibility, you have to be connected to your suppliers, to your carriers, and bring that information in to see, and then to respond. And particularly if you think about responding in the execution window to a disruption, right? If I've got products stuck on a ship, right? And I receive that alert in my control tower and I know immediately the ship stuck, you know, or containers fall off the ship, right? That we've seen. Mm -hmm. What products are on there? Can I get more from my supplier faster? Being able to respond to, I need to know what products, what suppliers, and to respond, 
is an action of execution with myself and one of my partners. So yeah. execution's multi-party in nature too. Yeah, you know, when you said containers fall off the ship, you weren't speaking metaphorically or- I know. Uh, literally containers falling I off the ship. Which makes this type of solution more important than exactly. ever before. What has artificial intelligence and machine learning brought to the table yes. in the in the years since control yep. tower was a, was a term and a concept? Absolutely, so just, you know, the amount of data to run supply chains is, I mean, it's massive, right? And the amount of intelligence, so to respond real time and intelligence and to process all the data and get those insights, you really do need machine learning. So when we, some of the things we've seen is just mm -hmm. processing all that information and applying machine learning as doing things like providing better predictive EATAs, when products will arrive or predicting when a stock out will happen, right? So users can get ahead of it with predictive insights. You know, one of the things that we were, I was just talking about in our session is if you think about how volatile right, and the amount of change and uncertainty we've experienced in the supply chains, and just think about ocean shipping, for instance, mm -hmm. right, and the rate of volatility and leveraging machine learning to really process the data and really give you still more accurate ETAs because the machines are constantly observing and processing and the algorithms are smart enough mm -hmm. so that way the ETAs our customers are relying on uh, you know, it was really didn't, you know, the level remained the same, right? So they had guarantees that their goods would, they would know what the date was versus people trying to figure out and scrambling, okay, mm -hmm. it's two weeks delayed, what's the impact, right? So the machines processing provide better, more predictive insights, more accurate insights. On top of that, we have a more current term, and that is the digital twin, the digital representation yep. of a complete supply chain. What is the relationship of that to a control tower? Yep. Absolutely, and I think that's another term we hear a lot of digital tin, digital supply chain twin, and that is that digital representation of what's truly occurring in the physical supply chain. And that's both to provide better insights to the control tower on real time, here's what's happening, and you need to take action because it's observing true patterns, as we know, that are constantly changing, right? Things are not static, they're dynamic, right? So when you are seeing and taking and being alerted, you want to alert on what's truly occurring. And when you take action, mm -hmm. you want the twin to be able to simulate based on what's being observed in true supply chain. So you want that to be dynamic. So for instance, you know, lead times within shipping are growing and changing. You want the system to automatically be processing and telling users to make decisions based on what's being observed. So the digital twin is changing things from static configuration and constraint assumptions into when I go to make a decision, so if I have a shortage, can I ship stock from this location? Do I have a supplier that can ship more? Whatever those decisions are, the digital twin's prescribing ones that are feasible and actionable because it's constantly observing what's truly occurring. So, Heidi, tell me a little bit about where Infor is today. The company's been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. What's it doing to help customers in these particularly perilous times with respect to supply chain issues? Oh, absolutely. I mean, supply chains are such a focus right now for everybody. Absolutely. And there's, there's so many things. I mean, with Infor, I find some of the things that are kind of unique. When we look at supply chains, we look at all aspects of supply chain. So we're helping companies with planning and, you know, one of the things we've heard for years, digital transformation and that need, right? So a lot of companies need to move off spreadsheets for planning into digital planning or modern warehouse systems for faster throughput. Mm -hmm. And then certainly with global end and supply chains, how they're managing their overall supplier relationships and moving their goods. You know, one of the things we do there is also looking at supply chains from both the physical and the financial aspects. So some of the things we see from our customers is I want to make sure my suppliers still can ship, right? And have the, you know, the, the capacity and I have to delay payments because my orders may have issues early during on in COVID. We saw orders drops and they wanted suppliers to hold inventory more, giving them financial solutions to help with that, like injecting financing. So it's not just about the physical movement of goods, but it's also the financial, right? And then we've helped them with a number of ways, technology-wise, to just get better integration with carriers, with everything from transportation execution and, and automating processes there and really expediting that and just getting better visibility into what's going on. I mean, everyone wants visibility. I want to see where the ship is, where the truck is, what's on it. Is it going to show up to my customer? Heidi Banco, I want to thank you so much for helping me to understand just what a supply chain control tower is today and how it can be of assistance to an organization. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me. Nice to see you again. <laughs> I've been speaking with Heidi Banco of Infor. Thank you very much for watching.